What's going on all you mentees? Uncanny Omar here from Near Mint Condition and join me today for my haul for January of 2021. First of the year, let's go ahead and get started. And welcome back everybody. So this is the first haul of the year, January. Uh, got some books that got a little bit delayed, but that's okay. And then I had some amazing viewers send me some books that they self-published, and I'll be looking at those here first. Before I go any further, I was trying to find a graphic novel that I talked about in my upcoming collected editions, and I can't remember if it was November, upcoming December, or upcoming January or February. I know it's a task. Uh, and I thought I had written it down like I always do when it comes to these obscure titles or titles that a lot of people aren't talking about. But it was the one that it was just about a couple in a car. That's it. And I remember in the video saying, that sounds like something I'd enjoy. And I could not remember what it was, so I tried to go back and watch my videos. Man, I go on way too long. How do y'all watch my stuff? Anyway, thank you all for watching. Um, if anybody can remember what the hell I was talking about, what graphic novel that was in one of the upcoming collected editions in the last couple of months, and you wrote it down, please let me know in the comments down below because I wanted to find that book. All right, let's go ahead and get started. Now on this channel, I mainly focus on graphic novels and trade paperbacks or collected editions, but the folks at Snooby Comics, Shannon, thank you so much, sent us magnets and stickers. This was so sweet, and this is their first published work. You have Super Nana and Cap App and Munch. So let me just show you a little bit of the artwork from Munch. It is a book that was self-published, and you can find more stuff about this particular book right here and Super Nana and Cap app by going to snoobycomics.com if you want to purchase yourself a copy and support independent writers and artists. I love people that publish their own stuff. I really look up to the people that can do this, that set aside everything and say, you know what, I'm going to write and draw my own comic book. I think that's awesome. It's very admirable. Like, to set the time aside... Uh, to get together, whether you're doing it by yourself or to get together with others, to put something out there and publish it, that's amazing. You, that I mean, that is step number one is always the hardest. So this is awesome. Thank you so much for sending both these. This looks really cute. Both of these our way, and my buddy Gavin, all the way from the UK, sent me an early birthday gift. This is uh, he goes by Partworks online. Super sweet guy, and this has never been collected here in America. This is the Ben Rab Michael Lark Hawkman story. And I've never heard of this. And when you had me at Michael Lark, so this is the collection that they get over there. It's like a one connecting spine. I love that stuff. But you can't miss one book, right? Otherwise, then you're going to be left with like this image, this collage missing a gap. That would look ridiculous. But anyway. This is a title I didn't even know existed until he sent it my way all the way from the UK. This was so sweet. So I can't wait to read this. Uh, Hawkman is one of those characters that, you know, I've read the Simonson run. I've read the Palmiotti stuff, the Jeff Johns era, the Hawk World stuff. It, it's just one of those characters that for some reason they tried to make a staple of the DC universe. But every time they try, they reboot the universe and com completely confuse everybody. So... I will definitely be reading this. This is so cool, man. Thank you so much. And also these three books from Cinebooks. This is the Chimpanzee Complex. And um, I got to mention this on my Saturday live stream that the artist of Valerian, that's how I'm familiar with Cinebooks, that and Lucky Luke uh, passed away recently, which really sucks. He had a very Mobius artwork. Uh, but they're a European-based company. They translate things into English and a lot of them come overseas, but a lot of their books get overlooked. Um, and I did an overview of Valerian and I did an overview of the first couple of Lucky Luke's probably do some more once we're all settled into the new house, uh, get together with the folks at Cinebook. The heart looks freaking stunning in this kind of reminds me a little bit of like Steve Epting, even Michael Lark in a way, just this realistic art style, a little bit of Luke Ross, Tim Hildebrandt right there is what I see. But anyway, uh, I don't know what this is. It looks like it's a three-volume set. It, the artwork is really stunning, though. Don't want to flip too much through here. Looks like it's a sci-fi type of story. That's right up Melanie's alley. And this one right here is volume three. Yeah. Here's all the blurbs about this particular book. Oh, yeah, really digging the artwork. 
Speaking of artwork, I was just talking about this guy, Snake Eyes. No, not Snake Eyes. I was talking about Rob Liefeld. Just got this in. This is the IDW G.I. Joe Snake Eyes. And sadly, IDW lost the rights to Transformers and G.I. Joe's, so they won't be reprinting this. This is a one-time thing. It was just a miniseries uh, done by Rob Liefeld, and the story is by Rob Liefeld. The script is by Chad Bowers. So, Snake Eyes is... For a lot of people, our favorite Joe. And I never had issues with Rob Liefeld's artwork. I know. I know people do. I, it's just uh, the feet thing. I don't know. It was it was a weird time. I talked a little bit about it on my Saturday live stream. How when somebody asked me about Rob Liefeld. Like, to me, it was just like, you know. Rob Liefeld was huge when I was a kid. He's the guy that shaped the New Mutants into the X-Force team. That we know and love. He's the guy that co-created Deadpool. Right. I get it. Without Fabian ECS, Deadpool would not be who Deadpool is. Completely agree with that. Uh, but, you know, there were a lot of kids my age. I was 12, 11, 12, 13 when he was huge. And then he went over to Youngblood. Everybody wanted to draw like him. I remember, you know, kids like mimicking his style. And I mentioned Marat Michaels and people like even Pat Lee a little bit. Todd Nock. If not, you know, for Liefeld, like, those guys wouldn't have developed the styles that they've had now. Brian Murray. Um, but... When I came back to comics, it became a completely different thing. People were just like, oh, this guy's a hack. He doesn't know proportions. He draws a lot of pouches, the feet thing. And honestly, as a kid, maybe, you know, nostalgia is a little blinding, but I never really noticed that stuff. Anyway, so this is his Snake Eyes comic. It's his mini series that he wrote. Uh, Destro. Next up is animosity evolution finally got this in this is the complete collection marjorie bennett this is a spin-off series of the animosity book so if you have the omnibus this is the spin-off now this one is priced a little bit better this one's only 39 dollars 99 i don't know what kind of stories are in here all i know is that it takes place in the same world and it's like side stories and adding characters to this world uh, you know, I need to finish Animosity because I never did get around to finishing it. A lot of people said that uh, the, the ending was a little disappointing or a lot disappointing to a lot of the comments that I saw. So I need to finish reading it and make up my own mind um, and then read this too. I don't know if anybody has read this, but in the comments, let me know what you thought of this particular series or if you've never heard about it. So this is the complete collection. This is the all-in-one. Every single thing of Animosity Evolution is collected in here, and this is what the artwork is. Um, that you'll find in here. It is the same height as the Omnibus, so fear not for those people that got year one hardcover and then year two turned out to be a different height. Yeah, that was a mess, but I think Aftershock did it right by printing this the same height as the Omnibus. Superman Blue! Omar, you're doing a Superman reading order! That's right. That means I gotta buy some Superman books that I forgot about. Uh, Superman Blue, Volume 1. Why did I forget about this? That's easy. Because I was waiting for a volume two and three. I was not going to be scanned by DC again. Because they left me hanging with Aquaman, Green Lantern, Kyle Rayner, Supergirl. So I said, oh cool, they're doing a Superman Blue? Hell yeah. I know, nobody else gets excited about Superman Blue. I'm, I'm weird like that, right? I'm so picky about comics. And then every once in a while, the crossing, Avengers the Crossing, Superman Blue. What the hell? Nobody likes this stuff. Um, and if you do, no offense. It's just a majority of people say they don't like it. They may mean something else when they purchase the books. But yeah, I waited for a volume two. Then no volume two came around. What the hell? <laughs> so it's been like three years since this volume came out. Uh, and it collects more than the Superman Transform book. So I had to get it. This is when Superman's powers are changing. And he becomes Electric Blue. Which is the way that you see him when he's introduced in the pages of JLA by Grant Morrison. So... This is where that story starts. And then he splits into another being. There's Superman Red, Superman Blue. It's like a Pepsi flavor. But anyway, this is Superman Blue. You'll see it in my reading order. Probably my next reading order, part two of Superman. Picked up some books that I know I'll be reading later this year. This is, they called us Enemy. This is by George Takei, graphic novel. It, it's his story when... His family and him were taken to a Japanese concentration camp here in America. So this is based on his childhood and the days that he spent there and, you know, the things that he saw. So all this is based on his personal life. I've heard people talk about this. I've never had a chance to read it, though. So I figured this year I need to keep some books out, 
while while we pack up some a bunch of other books for the move but i think uh this one is probably one that i'm going to keep out i already have a stack of books and the stack is getting it's getting to be a little much but then there's books that i'm like oh i have to read that that looks awesome and i've been hearing so many things about it or that looks like it's life-changing next up even though i'm not going to be able to show much of the artwork in here is akira toriyama's manga theater and it's not because i don't want to it's just because with the things going on with the fair use policies in Japan, Japan and America in YouTube but because of everything happening in my personal life I haven't had a chance to actually shoot that video because I don't want to shoot a video and give people misinformation I want to make sure I have everything correct my I's dotted and my T's crossed so this is Akira Toriyama's manga theater it is a wonderful anthology uh, of his early work before Dragon Ball. The best thing about this is that, to me, uh, there's different things in here. There's adventure, there's superhero stuff, but the, my favorite thing that's finally collected in English for the first time is Go Go Ackman. Oh my gosh, I have been waiting years for Go Go Ackman to be collected in English. And here's a, just a little bit of what the other art looks like in here so like Kira Toriyama the guy that made Dragon Ball Dragon Ball Z Sandland um, and Dragon Quest of course the character designs this is a wonderful hardcover collection it's a Tonkobon it's just like the size of the Junji Ito hardcover so I also picked up the Zerder now for the people asking you know what's going to happen to the manga videos on your channel some of them are missing and some of them are set to private well yes they are set to private right now uh because of the copyright strikes and i am not going to be walking around on eggshells until that is solved that is the issue between the fair use policy in japan and youtube if anybody needs to be handling that it should be the people that let us put our videos on their platform. It is ridiculous, and I feel so bad for the people that only review manga or the people that only review anime. It is a horrible thing to be going through, especially if this is what you do for a living. Uh, Junji's Ito's Deserter. Not that I could show much of this because I haven't even read any of this stuff, but I did end up picking it up. So the manga halls will be back in some way, and I am working with publishers here in America to make sure uh, what I can show and things like that just in case you know there's any further issues it is frustrating believe me for me as the creator just as much as it is for the people that have been asking where are the manga videos when are we going to get some more in-depth looks at stuff so they are not they're just on hiatus for the moment they will be back in some way i promise darkness the hardcover edition this is the complete darkness volume two uh, this was originally a Kickstarter along with Volume 1. There's a soft cover edition of this uh, that's coming out as well. I didn't see anything past Volume 2 though, so I don't know if they're going to continue Darkness in hardcover format. This is published by Top Cow Studios. Kind of give you an idea of what some of the artwork looks like in here. But I will say the thing about these hardcovers from Top Cow is that they're standard size. They're not an omnibus size. They're not as tall as Omni's. So the main reason I got this is because I love the artwork. Uh, this is a character that was created by Garth Ennis, Mark Silvestri, David Wall. Um, but a lot of the art in here you're going to see is done by Joe Benitez, who eventually blew up and did his own thing with Lady Mechanica. He went over to do things over at DC Comics. You see a lot of his early artwork in this particular book, just like you saw a lot of early um, Michael Turner in the pages of Witchblade. Uh, there's some David Finch art in here. So you see a lot of artists you may be familiar with. This is where they got their start. And they blew up. They became superstars after they went over and did some Top Cow work. We saw Scenery. This is a book that actually The Astonishing Melanie picked up. This is Meryl Marco's We Saw Scenery, The Early Diaries of Mer Meryl Marco. So it's done as a prose and it's done as a graphic novel format in a journal entry type of way. Uh, she's the one that's been reading this and really enjoying it, and she could probably tell you more about it. Maybe this will show up in our Hidden Gems one day. Speaking of Hidden Gems, that segment will be back tomorrow, my wonderful wife and I. Since we picked up, like, we packed up so many of our books, I had to go get a box of books and pick out some books to do for the Hidden Gems. So they will be back tomorrow. She Could Fly. I finally picked this up. Uh, 
there's a Patreon of mine. We do a one-on-one, and I don't know if he wants to be named or anything, but thank you so much for suggesting this. He's been suggesting this for a long time, and he said, how could you not have added that? Well, it's Christopher Cantwell that wrote this. How did I not know about this? She could fly. It's about a young girl, 15 years old, that can fly. Many people saw her. I don't know anything about it other than the art. So the artist here is Martin Morasso. You see a lot of images like that in here. And Martin Morasso, of course, is familiar to me because of Ice Cream Man. I love his style. He's got this creepy take on, like, a cartoony style that I really enjoy. And there are some creepy images. I was flipping through here. I didn't get to the end because I don't want to know exactly what's going on other than the fact that this young girl can fly, and that's the big mystery. Now, there's a couple of volumes in this, but he swears up and down that he loves this book. And I love Christopher Cantwell. He's the guy that wrote Doom, and he's writing Iron Man right now, and I'm really enjoying, or I enjoyed both series. So I can't wait to dive into this one. This one's published by Dark Horse Comics, and it is part of the Burger books. And that's Karen Burger from Vertigo that went over to D, uh, Dark Horse. The Book Tour. One that, actually, this is one that just got my attention because of the cover. This is written by and drawn by Andy Watson. Um, and I made the mistake of reading a little bit of the blurb. Uh, I'm sorry, the synopsis of the book uh, before I purchased it, and I should have just purchased it blind. Sometimes it pays off, and then other times, uh, not so much. Uh, but this is about the struggles of a writer, of being a writer, getting writer's block, the anxiety that comes with it. But it's done in a unique way, and according to the synopsis, it's also very humorous. So this is the type of art style that's in here. I, I like it. I think it's easy to follow. It gets the job done. Yes, it's simple, but sometimes you need a break from the super realism of art in <laughs> that you'll find in some superhero books. I love attention to detail. I love cross-hatching. I love shadows. Um, I love super detailed artwork, but sometimes I need this in my life too. So I have quite a range of the things that I enjoy. And this is definitely up there. And this is called The Book Tour. So if you've read it, let me know what you thought of it. Without spoilers, please. Now, a book I did read and I did an overview of is The Milestone Compendium, Volume 1. And if you want to check out that video, just click on the link above. And I talk about the history of Milestone and the importance of their work here in the comic book industry. But this is Volume 1. Hopefully, we'll get some more. All right. I had to upgrade. I had to, yes. And ironically enough, this is called Upgrade Soul. But I had to. This was one of my favorite reads in, when was it? 2020, I believe, when Wonder Maddie, myself, and the amazing Amanda read this particular book. The least you know about it, the better off you are. I would definitely try to re read it digitally, though. This is done by Ezra Clayton Daniels. I almost said Ezra Miller. Good thing I didn't. Um, and this is the new hardcover edition. It's got a new introduction by... Darren Aronofsky. Oh, we might get a movie, perhaps, one day. Um, I know Wonder Maddie picked this up, too, as part of her haul, and she complained about the size of this creepy cover, because it is full splash page in the trade paperback edition. Uh, but the least you know about it, the better off you are. Oh my gosh, this was one of my favorite reads in... 2020 and if you have not read it you need to do yourself a favor it is creepy it's beautiful and there's lessons to be learned from this particular book and this is published by oni press and it's the new hardcover edition 29 dollars 99 i think the trade paperback is 17.99 so just about 10 12 more dollars to get the hardcover edition i did an overview of the flash this is volume three by jeff johns if you want to check that out it is on the link above uh, but this is the latest and the last Jeff Johns Flash Omnibus. And I say the last until, you know, he goes back and writes the character again that we can get a volume four. All right, you all know me by now in my halls. I have to get some art books. So I got a couple of Kingdom Heart art books. This is the character files. So this shows the character's progression through the different games. Uh, if you haven't played the games, this... We'll probably have some spoilers, but this has CG artwork in here. Uh, this is published by Dark Horse Comics. And you get the different variations of the characters throughout the different games, from the DS to the PSP, PS2, PS3, PS4 versions. So it was just a book that I've been wanting to get. I love art books. And you're not going to see a lot of hand-drawn animation. This is mainly the character study sheets right here. So a lot of it is in CG. And eh, that's the kind of stuff I wanted to check out. Um, 
I know it's been unavailable for a long time in America, and Dark Horse just recently reprinted it, but with this, I also had to get Kingdom Hearts Ultimania. This is the story before Kingdom Hearts 3. Again, this is the art of Kingdom Hearts. So it's very similar to the one that you just saw, but this goes through everything. And you also get some uh, character uh, designs in this particular book. You get all the enemies, the glossary of the enemies, the backgrounds, and a quick like synopsis of the story in case you want to catch up with Kingdom Hearts and for some reason have enough time to read about it instead of playing the game. Maybe there are people like that. Uh, more power to you. And this is the stuff that I really like. And, of course, the official artwork. This, to me, is the moneymaker, baby. I love hand-drawn art. I appreciate CG. It's a different art uh, form, but this stuff right here is what I enjoy. Like that. You know, compared to this. This is a beautiful piece, don't get me wrong. All the different weapons. And basically everything that happens before Kingdom Hearts 3 is in here. By the way, each one of these books does have a leaflet that I never get rid of, and I know I'm not the only one that keeps these stupid things. How in the world do we go from something so wholesome as Disney Squaresoft's, or I'm sorry, Square Enix Kingdom Hearts to Milo Manara's The Golden Ass? Yes, I'm going to be censoring the hell out of this because even the cover is full nudity. So, let's open this up really carefully. Okay, I can show just a couple of pages, but you all know I'm a huge fan of Milo Manara's artwork. Uh... With that, sometimes comes a lot of uh, erotic stories that he's done over the, oh my gosh, the decades that he has been drawing comics. But his art style is breathtaking. This is a really short read. This is published by uh, Humanoids. Again, I can only show just some of the art. There's something really weird that pretty much this young man right here turns into a donkey. Um, and because there's a lot of adult themes in here, Something really weird happens in this that I was like, oh, oh, whoa, oh, man. Uh, <laughs> I did not sign up for this kind of show. <laughs> but anyway, this is Milo Manara's The Golden Ass. Um, and it is definitely mature content. It is oversized. But it's a beautiful book. And if you're a fan of Manara, then you know you've already picked it up. It's just, it's more out there than any of his erotic stuff that I've read in the past. From Dark Horse, I also picked up this right here, which is the companion, or rather, the uh, Umbrella Academy short stories. And it comes in pink. Uh, this one here is interesting because the spine says, you look like death. I like that. And here you go. The first Umbrella Academy spin-off series. So this is not done by Gerard Way. Um... So it is done by Gerard Way, but you're not going to find his artist that he usually collaborates with, Gabriel Ba or Fabio Moon, in any of this. So, oh, I mean, maybe the covers, but it's mainly short stories that he helps co-write. It's This is the library edition that comes in the slipcase, and they decided to go with pink, and it's side stories featuring the characters from the Umbrella Academy. So it is a beautiful book. And then this is the print that you get with the slipcase edition. That's nice. But let me just show some more of the artwork in here. So it features a lot of the characters from the series and a lot of supporting cast members from the Umbrella Academy. As far as the ex and as far as the extras, there are sketches in the back, character designs in the back. Um, unfinished pages and then a bio on all the people that put this together so yeah I think Gabriel Ba just does the covers if I'm not mistaken cover and chapter breaks by Gabriel Ba that's what I thought I gotta say it's an interesting slipcase design because that does not say Umbrella Academy to me if I just saw this out in the store well if I was facing this like yeah that doesn't say Umbrella Academy to me maybe the flamingos look like umbrellas I haven't read this particular miniseries, so I'm not sure what that has to do with flamingos. But speaking of slipcases, of course, the Jack Kirby Fourth World, uh, which I did an overview of. If you want to check out on the channel. Oh, man. This is probably one of my favorite releases this year. This is Volume 2, and now I need to find Volume 1 before it goes out of print. So here is RDW, A Tale of Lost Fantasies. This is Marco Rudy's uh, RDW, and I have to give... 
them a huge thank you for sending this my way. Uh, my wife and I got this on Saturday, and um, I think I've mentioned it on Saturday. It is it, it's signed by Marco Rudy. It's beautiful. It's beautiful, man. The painted artwork that's in here just reminds me of Alex Ross, and I feel bad because. On Saturday when I got this in, I also got a phone call from the hospital because my dad's been hospitalized and um, I had to drop everything I was doing to take off on the Saturday stream and it, I wanted to take some books with me but I, I just I couldn't think so I'm so sorry I promise I will give this the time to read all these books that have been sent my way. Thank you all so much. This is a beautiful book. I, it was published in Canada I want to say it's not available in America. Uh, let's see, $35 Canadian dollars. It is dark fantasy and suggested for uh, mature readers. But oh my gosh, this artwork, holy crap. How has nobody talked about this book? I want to take the time to read this or uh, Marnie the Fox that Brian sent my way last time. But thank you all so much. This was this is wonderful. Marco Rudy, man, this is absolutely beautiful. It is a huge oversized book. If you're familiar with the magnetic press books, how big they are, this is just a slightly bit bigger, like in height. Just a little bit, not much. And speaking of Magnetic Press, that's how we're going to wrap up this haul. We have a couple books, Shangri-La. And this is done by uh, Babette, Matthew Bablet. And I, this is just the standard edition. This isn't the limited edition Kickstarter. I know they do Kickstarters, and they're beautiful books. Uh, but this one here is what I like to call the poor man's version. I'm okay with that. I can wait on that. Uh, limited edition books are beautiful. Magnetic Press puts out a lot of wonderful stuff. Uh, I really like the Bad Blood books that I read in the past. Um, I think one was printed by Titan Comics, and the other one by, by Fana, not Fanagraphics, but Magnetic Press. And I cannot wait to dive into these. The one that I read was more of a fantasy or, sorry, a post-apocalyptic type of world. This one here seems to be more of a sci-fi fantasy type of story. It Artwork and the colors are just beautiful. And... Also got Carbon Silicon, and this is another work right here, published by uh, Magnetic Press by Matthew Bablet. This one here looks more like a sci-fi story more than the other book did. I will say, flipping through here earlier, I had to edit out some things already. Uh, this is definitely mature content, as well as Shangri-La. Both of these books, published by Magnetic Press, brought over to America from Europe. They bring over a lot of amazing work, and I hope they continue doing so, and it's long as they keep publishing books, I will keep mentioning them on my channel, whether through Hidden Gems or sometimes if I do any more reviews in a flash when the time is given to me. But both absolutely beautiful. I love the way that they have these curved corners on all their books, most of their hardcovers rather, instead of the sharp corners, the edges that you were used to, the 90 degree corners that we're used to here in America. I like that. It makes their books stand out. Beautiful books. But that, as they say, is that. If you're interested in purchasing any of these books, don't forget to check out our sponsors. If you live in Europe and are interested in pre-ordering or purchasing Omnis, then you should definitely check out Walt's Comic Shop in Berlin, Germany. They have the cheapest pre-order prices for Marvel and DC big books within the EU, flat shipping of 990 euro for EU countries, extremely careful and sturdy packaging, emails are answered within 24 hours, and they have a superb selection of new releases and out-of-print books on their website. Just head over to waltzcomicshop.com for more great deals and rare titles. And for a limited time, you can use the code NEARMINCONDITION, all one word, at the checkout for free shipping to all EU countries with your first order. Waltz Comic Shop, your reliable source for Omnis and premium collected editions in Europe. This episode is brought to you by CheapGraphicNovels.com, your online home for graphic novels and collected editions up to 50% off cover price. They have excellent shipping and prompt and helpful service. Check out their bargain deals for up to 90% off cover price. And don't forget that CGN also takes pre-orders. That way you don't miss out on the hottest releases. And they are currently running a special promotion for you Minties. If you're a first time customer, after receiving your confirmation email from CGN, reply back to that email and let them know Near Mint Condition sent you their way. They will then apply a free shipping promotional credit to your next order in the US. Cheap Graphic Novels, your source for the hottest books with the kind of deep discount, quality shipping, and customer service that will keep you coming back for more. And that was my haul for the month of January. Let me know in the comments down below what you ended up picking up, what some of your favorite books are that you picked up, and if anybody remembers that freaking book I was talking about when I was doing my upcoming collected editions, please leave that comment down below. 
This was the Uncanny Omar. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to smash that like button. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet. Ring that bell for notifications to let you know when our videos are going live. We are on Patreon and Spreadshop. Amazing ways to support the channel if you can do so. And more importantly, everyone, stay healthy, stay safe out there. Much love.